So I'm going to review some stuff, and for many people, it'll be kind of old hat, and I'll probably go pretty quickly through that. Then I want to talk a little bit about the extent to which that family change has caused what I see as the big problems. Um, and this is a place where my interpretation of the numbers differs from some other people's, and so we can talk a little bit about that at the end. Some people might agree or not. And then I'll talk um, about the things that I know best, which is designing policy, and what are the policies that have been put in place. Um, I'll talk a little bit about things that have happened in the last couple of years and that are on the horizon, or at least maybe until we woke up this morning might have been on the horizon. Now, there's different things on the horizon now, um, but what we might see. And then um, because I am an academic, I will end with a puzzle. So I hope to convince you that I have some answers to some questions, but I will end with um, a question that I think is an imp important one to which I cannot find an answer. And so hopefully maybe some of you will be able to help me. Okay, so the changes that I think have altered the landscape, um, we have for marriage, less marriage, and it's happening later. For children, people are having fewer of them a little bit later, and those children are less likely to be um, born to or live with married parents. And on employment, um, I will show you some evidence that men and women's work patterns have um, converged, um, though I will note that um, men still are ahead of women, um, something that you might not gather if you just read the New York Times. Um, so here's kind of, um, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time explaining this picture because I'm going to show pictures that are a lot like this over and over again. Um, along the bottom are the ages of women. And what you see there, if you follow the red line, the top line, is the share of women who were married at each of those ages. And so what you'll see is that in 1970, if you look at the very left of the graph, 15 to 19-year-old women, about 10% of them were married. By the time those women, by the time women who were 25 to 29 in 1970, about 80% of them were married. And marriage rates, the proportion married, didn't change much, you know, as women aged. So what's happened now, 2006 is the blue line, that line at the bottom. Um, they're, they're nice and like in nice order there. Um, at 15 to 19, almost nobody's married. By 25 to 29, still a lot of people aren't married. It's under 50%. And then by the time you get to 40 to 44, you see about two thirds of women are married. So two things are going on here. Fewer women are getting married overall, and those who are married are marrying a little bit later, okay? So we have both a decline and a delay in marriage. And just a quick note, since I can't come here and not acknowledge cohabitation, cohabitation accounts for some of this. Those little green bars are um, cohabiting women. And the other thing that I want to acknowledge here is that patterns vary quite a lot if you look across different racial and ethnic groups. And a lot of the work that Debbie Reed and I have done is trying to parse out some of those differences. But generally speaking, not universally, generally speaking, the trends are the same. Levels are different, but trends are the same. So for example, you'll see marriage rates are higher for whites than for blacks. Um, American Indians and Hispanics are kind of in between. Um, Asian and Pacific Islanders have very high marriage rates. But what you'll see is that the trends pretty much for all of those groups are the same, a decline over time, with cohabitation making up some of the increase in cohabitation making up some of the difference, but not most of it. 